Welcome everybody Welcome. to Waterbox Live. The best day of the week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Um, everyone should be joining us at this time. Grab a drink. Yes, it's happy hour. And hang out with us. Make sure, if you guys are on uh, YouTube, make sure you like, share, hit those notifications because remember, we're here every week. Yes, we are. So if you're looking to pick up some, uh, some merch, you can head over to our uh, waterboxaquariums.com. And don't forget that Waterbox can be bought direct in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and the U.K. All over the place. All over the world. But today also, we're talking about yeah. fish and corals, mm -hmm. how to pick them for your aquarium. Um, and kind of just a lot of people have new Waterbox right now and they need help with deciding on when to put certain fish in, corals, things like that. So. We're going to drop lots of knowledge today. So let's get it started, you guys. Welcome back, everybody. All right. Love that intro. You got to turn up your speaker. It is. Enough. You got to jam out to it. Get yeah. pumped up. It's just, I don't know. We always have really good music for our we stuff. We do. So we do. We like to add really good music to our, our intros going. and our, our product promos and stuff. Um, so, I do want to touch on something real quick, Jess. Okay. Um, I'm following your lead. I, don't yeah, so, I have no idea. <laughs> guys, we, it, recently, and Keenan, I don't know if you can get this pulled up or if you have it pulled up already, we released a new home delivery option for the U.S. So um, you have three options now for our tanks. This is very exciting. It is. So, very. Yes. So we, we're offering a curbside delivery. That's your basic service that's free on many of the tanks. We're also offering now an inside delivery for 99, used to be 175, so you can get $99 inside delivery on all of our freight delivered tanks, as well as something completely new, the premium inside delivery on up to our four foot tanks for 199. Basically that brings it into your house, any room in your house, even the second story, they'll even dispose of the uh, Pack the packaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So yeah, so you like, we have your basic, which is curbside, which means it's coming in basically kind of to mm -hmm. your curb. Yep. Sometimes they'd be in your driveway or you whatever. Get your buddies um, to help you get they're it in. dropping off the truck and saying, see ya. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the uh, inside delivery, which is inside like your garage. It's not inside the home. Yeah. So it's like to your front door if there's no steps or inside a garage, they'll roll it in there. Um, keeps you, it gives you more time to have to get it moved and get people over and stuff like that. Gives you a little bit of time. The uh, premium delivery, like that's in your house. Two people are coming, they're putting yeah. it in the room that you want. They'll take the pallet and all that away. Like, that's a great service. It's um, a huge value, And it's up too. to our four-foot models. Yeah, huge value. Only yeah. 199 bucks for that, guys. It's, it's really a really great service. I do want to note, because I have seen some questions since we released this. Mm -hmm. They're not going to set the tank up for you. That's no. up to you. That's up to you guys. They're not going to put together your cabinet and put the tank on the stand. But they are going to do one of the hardest parts, which is getting it into the house and disposing of the packaging if you want them to. Yeah. Um, so definitely take advantage of it. Great value. Um, when we released that, we released it after Blue Friday, and we already had a tremendous amount of people upgrading to that, mm -hmm. so it just shows you there's there's really good value. With yeah, because if your order hasn't shipped yet, you can definitely upgrade mm -hmm. and change your service. Yeah. Um, so those options are available to you. Like I said, the premium is only four foot and smaller. The inside delivery is for all the models. Yeah. So save yourself a little bit <clears> of back breaking effort um, <clears throat> in the process, and you know definitely check those out. Any questions, just reach out to support, and they'll help you out. Love it. Great service. I want to give some shout outs real quick because there's a bunch of people joining us yes. this Wednesday. We got Scott, Reef Hacks, Nano Reefer, uh, Fred with us, Palm Tree palm is with tree. us as well. We have a palm well, tree. Florida is fitting. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I love palm trees. Uh, Travis and Devin. So thank you all for joining us. Again, remember, like the, uh, the video. Mm -hmm. That helps us with the Google algorithm so that they show our videos more often as well as subscribe, <laughs> hit them notification bell. Algorithms? Algorithms. <laughs> I had to make sure that I got the whole word out. It's a tough one. It's <laughs> yeah. a tough one. Um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's some great, um, something new that we've released is the whole delivery options. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we have a ton of people that are joining the family. Lots oh, of man. stuff going out there. So um, definitely check those out. And along with that goes okay maybe it's your first tank or maybe it's mm -hmm. a bigger tank you have before kind of the question we get a lot um through our sh through our shows and just in general is like how do i pick my fish how do i pick my corals like what do i start with 
you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, it can be very overwhelming because there's a ton of corals and there's a ton of fish to kind of guide. So we're going to help give some knowledges on that yeah. today. We're going to give you guys some insight into into the fish and corals. And we're, what we're going to use our 220 here as an example mm -hmm. for the types of fish and coral we have in there. Now, obviously, that doesn't translate to like a cube 10 or a cube 20, but we're going to try to give you as much, yeah, we're going to give you as much insight as we can with the the fish and corals that we do house in that tank and how those translate into the other tanks. This is an open discussion, so you got you guys are here with us live. So make sure you post in the comments. Yes, ask questions, any questions you have. along with what you have with that. So yeah. you know, instead of us just standing here and telling you about fish and corals, we figure we'd put the two twenty on display yeah. and show some of the really nice stuff that's in there. That's what I've been running for two years now. Two years, it's beautiful um, too. You know, and it's come a long way. A lot of the corals that we're going to show you. Um, Definitely started as little tiny baby frags. There she is. Um, Ooh, that's a nice filled thing. in quite nicely. Yeah. The uh, normally, I think a lot of these corals are, you know, turning over into their pillow about now. They're ready to go to sleep. We turned the the white lights back on. So yeah, I they're think like, they're, hey, 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 what's see going a, on that here? That toadstool back there is a little irritated by what we did, but. <laughs> Still looks good nonetheless. They got their bedtime and they're past it right now because the lights usually go off like um, probably like 20 minutes ago. The lights start to ramp down. Yeah, so they're we just mainly, the mainly just blue lights, you know, about yeah. right now. So. so we're going to showcase some stuff in there and kind of talk about types of corals and fish um, and kind of where they belong in the setup process and like their care requirements mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So I think we're starting with fish on yes. that one. And this tank has a really nice selection of fish. Some of my favorite fish. Yes, so we've highlighted a few yeah. of those. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start with the clowns. Yes, all right. Clownfish, everybody's favorite. Everyone. So we actually, in this tank, have four clowns. Um, two of your regular ones, two of your black and whites. It's kind of just, they've been together a long time. And these guys are actually hosting and laying eggs on the elegance. Um, I have a backstory with these real quick, just yes. before you go. And my wife, Angela, is in here as well. These I've had these clownfish now, I think, for close to... I'm gonna call it at least 10 years. So they, they've been with me for quite a while. So again, these aren't just your everyday clownfish. These have been in numerous tanks of mine mm -hmm. and now they live in the 220. Yes, so there's good guys and they're actually breeding and laying eggs on elegance. One of the straggler black and whites tends to like to hang out in this coral. The other one kind of bounces around to everything. There's no um, anemones in this tank. No, there's not. So clownfish are a great beginner. They're very hardy. Most of them are captive bred. They eat pretty much all different types of food. They're very forgiving for water quality in general. Um, and you can see the, the male right there is kind of cleaning up the elegance and they just are kind of annoyingly laying <laughs> eggs over and over again on the elegance, which um, that thing used to be about this big. And now that they're laying eggs, now. it's like this big because yeah. they just beat it up and are, all that stuff. But um, so clownfish are a great starter fish. Yeah. Every tank can have a pair pretty much by size. 10 gallons and up roughly. Um, they're really easy. There's a ton of color patterns. Mm -hmm. Little fancy ones, regular ones. Um, Very widely captive bred, and that's a great yes. thing about them. So in regards to sustainability, there's no real ne reason to buy a wild caught clownfish, I don't think. No. Bore has 53 different variations of clownfish that are captive bred. So if wow. You want, they have the, they have super wild, they have regular clownfish and they got go all the way up to like super wild yeah, the crazy looking. designer yeah. clowns have gotten to be very, like, a huge amount of patterns and stuff. Sure, Keenan's got a question. Yeah, is there a minimum size tank that you can keep clowns in? I mean, if you're only keeping them and nothing else because they can be territorial, um, you could keep two of them in a 10 gallon, but there'd be no other fish. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I would just, that'd be your minimum. I've seen people keep, like, a single or even a pair in a little bit smaller, but I think 10 gallons is the best for if you're just doing two of them and those are the only fish that are in there. Yeah. So clownfish are a great starter fish. Kind of in that same group of starter fish are gonna be things like Royal Grandma's firefish, mm -hmm. um, cardinals, you know, things like that. Uh, we've done a lot of builds where we've started with yeah. those um, types of fish and, you know, consider those to be easy beginner forgiving. Yeah, would you say blennies maybe? Possibly blennies. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of what other groups kind of go into that, but that's a good beginner batch. Most people, when they start their tank, clowns tend to be the first thing to go in. Yeah. To it's kind of like test the, the water, uh, see how it goes. It's almost like the uh, tried and true 
saltwater aquarium fish. They've been bred. Everyone for, needs a Nemo. Yeah, I mean, too. <laughs> you they've know? been bred for. I mean, they've been breeding clownfish, I think, since the 70s, I want to say. Have. So yes. it's, yeah. uh, it's just a really good, sustainable, relatively easy to keep. They live for a long time. They do. So, you know, <laughs> kept properly, they do have a long lifespan. They will breed in captivity. Mm -hmm. They'll lay eggs. Even though in a regular aquarium, when the eggs hatch, you're not going to get babies out of them. It's still their... That's how well adapted they are captivity are they, that they are. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's a good choice for beginner fish right there. Love it. Love it. Next, next fish. <laughs> if you guys have fish? questions about clownfish, post them below. There's, uh, a, there's a question that just came in, and that's actually for the next fish. Oh, there, there she is. So actually, we caught two of them in that picture right there. Um, the kind of light pink and yellow and the, that one right there. These are Antheus, so that's a liar tail male. Um, Antheus, and the one that was in the other one was a Bartlett Antheus, I do believe. And <clears throat> these guys are good schooling fish. Mm -hmm. You can keep a group of them in there. So like for one, one male here, you can actually have three or even more females in there, and they will actually school together. They form a harem. Um, if you put all females, the dominant one will actually become the male over time, and the other ones stay female. These are, however, I would say intermediate care, just because they do generally do best on frozen food. Mm -hmm. They don't take to prepared foods nearly as well, um, and they're going to be sensitive to any like fluctuations in water quality. So they need frequent feeding, at least once a day. Um, but they're great open water swimming fish, and they're beautiful. So many colors, a lot of varieties that they come in. What size aquarium would you say is the minimum for those guys, especially if you're keeping multiple? Ideally, like three foot. Yeah. I mean, they can cover a lot of space in a bigger tank, but like if you want to have like a male and like two or three females, which is kind of like your minimum grouping, mm -hmm. um, you know, three foot and have them as a main water column fish. Like yeah. I don't put them in with competing like heavy, heavy eaters like a group of chromis. Yeah. Because they tend to just eat everything. These guys are going to be more shy if you have too aggressive of tank mates. Mm -hmm. um, but you got like we got Bartlett's and Disbar's, Liar Tails. Um, you know, there's some really cool fancy Antheus, like Barbonius and stuff that are like hundreds of dollars. Um, but all of them the same. They don't really take prepared foods as well. Go with frozen intermediate care. Yeah. Excellent. Love those fish. They're beautiful. Yes. Um, David is asking, um, other than green chromis and, uh, and the Antheus, what are some other good schooling fish? Um, green chromis, the word of caution, I guess, is that if you get a school of them, they're going to eat like 500 times their body weight before any other fish gets food. They're like little piranhas. <laughs> you put a group of them in there and you put all this food in yeah. there and they eat it all. And then everyone else is like, hey, because they're so fast <laughs> at it. And you end up putting more and more food in there. So they're going to create a lot of waste and eat a lot of food. They're really pretty as a group, but do beware of that and the um, issue. Schooling wise... There's not a lot of schooling fish. Firefish technically school. Yeah. Cardinals can technically school. I know I'm missing. Um, chalk bathlets are kind of a cool schooling one. But typically in an aquarium. Not, not a lot of schooling yeah. fish. Um, in the wild, I mean, like huge groups of tangs and stuff school. But in the home aquarium, there's only but so many that actually stick together. I'd say firefish, cardinals, antheus are going to be probably your main categories of schooling stuff. Cool. Ready for the next fish? Who do you have next? All right. This is everyone's, well, a lot of people's favorite. Yeah. Dory fish. <laughs> yes. The Dory. Yes, the blue tang. I don't know if people know it's called a blue tang, and they just really refer to Dory, like, 50% uh -huh. of the time. I even know it's a blue tang half the time. I just say Dory, because, I don't know, it's easy to recognize. <laughs> um, so the in world the knows them as Dory. Yeah, no. <clears throat> in the tang group, you're looking at um, this guy being one of the bigger ones does definitely need the five six foot tank minimum as they do get 12 plus inches um huge a foot huge. long <laughs> yeah and there are tanks that get say a little bit smaller but they still need four foot tanks um so blue hippo here herbivore need to put sea veggies in every day for them um not going to handle really aggressive tank mates and tangs tend to be very ick prone which is a parasite mm -hmm. so you do have to make sure that they're quarantined properly or sourced properly from someone that, you know, a store or something that makes sure that they do not have that parasite. Um, main thing is herbivores and they get big, yeah. big, 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 and they poop yeah. a lot. 
They eat a lot. They poop a lot. They're big. They need yeah, a lot of so space. Yeah, so like in your tanks, like you have some smaller ones that could probably go in like a four foot tank. We've had we have one of those a couple in there. And they're like yellow tanks, uh, coal tanks. They still tamines. They still a bit smaller, but like the blonde nasos, the blue hippos, mm -hmm. the flamingos all get really big. So that's six or seven foot. Except for mango, she doesn't get big. No, mango's a dwarf. We don't. We I don't, don't know how we didn't showcase we're not her. her today, I don't think. Is she in? No, she's not in any of them, is she? I mean, we can switch to the live shot. She's always asking yeah, for Yeah, yeah, switch yeah. it over. So we have a, a, a blonde naso tang that I've had. <clears throat> Gosh, I, I have trouble remember. I think I've had that that blonde naso tang, which her name is Mango, by the way. <laughs> she has been with me, I think, since like 2007, so like 13 years. But she never really grew to full size, and I, I don't know why. Maybe she's it could have been the aquarium she was in, or maybe she's just a dwarf. I don't she's know. She's kind of always been in, some, in like big aquariums, though. I mean, she's been eight foot, six foot, like. She was never in less than a six foot. So, yeah, so this mango was the anomaly of blonde naso tangs. She should uh, be like 13 inches. And she's like eight, <laughs> yeah. eight inches long, yeah. like something like that. <laughs> um, you can see her size in retrospect to the six foot tank. And like the blue hippo is close to her size soon. The Hollywood tusk has beat her in size. Yeah. And she doesn't grow. Doesn't matter how much sea veggies you give her, how big of a tank. She's just like. She gets wider Stuck. in girth, but she does not get no. longer. <laughs> she's plenty fat. She's yeah. just not growing. Um, so I'm not sure what that species is, but she's like a. a but that's a great tank species if you have a six foot tank or larger. I to, love blonde uh, nasos. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. Love them. Specifically, my favorite are the blonde nasos. That's what you got to look for. Yeah, they have the the orange top fin versus the regular mm. naso has a black top mm. fin. You got another question here. Are blue tangs aggressive like some of the yellow tangs can be? No, they're wimps. They're like total <laughs> wimps. Um, every time I've had a blue hippo or had one in a store that I worked at or anything, they hide. They're scared of their own shadow. Like they are just the biggest little wimps. Um, and they will be easy, easily bullied, which is also something you have to consider because, um, you know, if they're stressed out in an aquarium, they're not coming out to eat and they're also more likely to get parasites and stuff and not do as well. You know, one of my favorite... <clears throat> Blue tangs variation. Blue tang variations with yellow belly. I don't know if they're even in the trade anymore. To be they honest, they are. They're hard to get. Yeah, those are one of my favorites. It's a, basically what you saw there, but it develops this kind of like yellow underside. Mm -hmm. So the full blue. The yeah. Yellow. yeah. There's a certain collection area for those, and it's very limited on how many yeah. come in. They're about. I think it's like two South to three, Africa. Two to three right? times as expensive to get one uh, of those. Yeah. Um, another question here. Uh, do you recommend any specific seaweed for the um, blue hippo tangs? I always use the um, the sea veggies from mm -hmm. your Julian Sprung. Yeah. Um, they have like green, red, purple. I think they have those three varieties, easy yeah. little sheets or whatever. Um, don't get like the food grade ones like a lot of people use because they do use like different preservatives and seasonings and stuff on those. Um, I think purple is the favorite of most fish. Is it? Yeah. Then followed by green. Red, I've had like hit or miss on if fish even eat the red. And if you guys, so the, she's talking about the two little fishies. If you search that online, you can find. They, they have not only the algae, but the magnetic clips. The that one that we them. use, yeah, the bigger yeah. one. So check that out. If you guys are feeding the nori, as we call it, or the algae sheets, definitely get those magnetic clips. Makes it way easier. Yes. All right, All right who is up next? next? Is yes. The tusk. Oh, this is one of my favorite right. fish. I'm going to let you walk on this guy. All-time all fish. <laughs> this is specifically an Australian <laughs> harlequin tusk. They have the best coloration in my opinion, would you agree, of any of the harlequin tusks that... You, you know, got to get them off Australia or they just don't have the same color. Indos are not as pretty. Yeah, so beautiful fish. Um, part of the wrasse family, right? Mm -hmm. Big old gnarly teeth in the front. Um, I would say that some people say this is reef safe with caution because they will, they can eat some of the inverts, would you say? Yes, so um, generally it's not considered a reef safe Rass. However, I find these to be one of the more docile of the large wrasses. Mm -hmm. um, in this tank here, we have cleaner shrimp and blood shrimp that have stayed with him in here. Um, I'm sure he takes a snail or a hermit crab down here and there, <laughs> but he is actually just a big baby. Um, and I know a few people have always said, like, hey, my harlequin tusk was super aggressive, but it's not their general personality to be really aggressive. Yeah. Um, they tend to be really shy until they get established. And, um, like, if you had one existing that was big and then you added a shrimp later, you would probably maybe then look at it as food. But we had our shrimp in here first mm -hmm. and then added him. 
and he never even looked at him. Yeah. Keeping him fed properly as well. He gets chunks of krill and all that yeah. stuff. Um, and he even goes after the sea veggie clip. Really aggressive. Yeah, like, I was just going to say, <laughs> the only problem he causes in that tank is if we're not careful right when we put the, the, uh, the veggie clip in there, he'll run up there and rip the whole thing right off and yes. run behind the rocks. And we're like, all right. And nobody gets any. And then you just see him like hitting it against rocks and pieces go floating. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, it's not for everybody in a reef. It yeah. definitely needs a big six foot tank or larger. And not everyone's willing to lose maybe some inverts here or there, or, yeah. you know, possibly a shrimp if he so decided. Have you ever seen him pick up a, a snail and like devour it? No. Yeah. Cause I used to have one in my old big tank. They, he, they almost, they grab it by like the underside and they almost like suck it out. I can see that. They had big, if you ever yeah. look, the cool thing about them is like their teeth are huge and they're bright blue. Yeah. Like they're really, really nice. Um, but it would be a great fish also for a fish only. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then sure. in the wrasse family, you know, you've got the larger considered not reef safe, but then you've got all the like fairy wrassers and flasher wrasses, mm -hmm. which are reef safe, beautiful, colorful, um, which is great for a reef tank yep. on the other side of it. Yes. What do you feed the wrasse? So he gets mostly krill and then he eats pellets, frozen mysis, sea veggies. He'll eat anything. Pretty sure. Probably eat your hand if you stuck it out there for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> They're not mean. I mean, if you had like. It, it does look like they would want to. With those, they got those big teeth. It mm -hmm. looks like they would be pretty aggressive. Yeah, there's very... a lot of other types of not reef safe wrasses that would totally eat your finger off if yeah. they could. Yeah. But the Harlequin's kind of like a baby of them. Like, they're a little bit sweeter. <laughs> There's something about like a lot of the wrasses that they just have crazy teeth because, I mean, the parrotfish, like the typical parrotfish you would see mm -hmm. like on a reef in the ocean is. Part of the wrasse family, right? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you guys can tell us. I don't know. I don't know. I think it might be a dome. Really? I think so. I know the dragon wrasse is really cool. Yeah. But that's definitely 100% a fish only type tank. Um, but you got these big teeth, super cool pattern, mm -hmm. and will like move rocks like three times the size. Yeah. And just move them and decorate around, like throw rocks and shells and stuff around. But um, those are pretty cool. Good deal. Yeah. All right, we can go to the next one. The Mandarin? Yes. Okay. Many people have been talking about it here online. <laughs> so this is our Mandarin. He's been in here for I don't know, a year plus. Yeah, probably a little like that. over a year. This is a favorite uh, fish of a lot of people. And a lot of people get into this hobby to have this fish. So elegant. And it's <laughs> not the right fish for 75% of people. Yeah. Probably. Uh, they're very specialized. Uh, they mostly only eat live food, which is copepods and stuff, amphipods in your tank. Very rarely will they take prepared foods, and they can't handle any aggression. Um, they can't be in small tanks. They benefit from refugiums. But gosh, they're beautiful. They are stunning. They're so, they're so cool. They're just, they just, like I said, they're so elegant when they're swimming around. They're just picking off copepods and stuff like that. I saw someone mention that they don't do they do well with copper and obviously they wouldn't because copper nope. kills invertebrates which is what they eat actually for their their um they actually are very slimed up kind of fish they're relatively scaleless mm -hmm. so they do not handle copper at all mm -hmm. um it's very very i would not quarantine them in that yeah. and just kind of consider with them is like our guy he's been in here for a year year and a half something like that and he does, if he comes across like a pellet or a piece of fish, a piece of mice that's sitting in there, he'll eat it. Yeah. But he's not going to actively chase like not live food. So you can see he's just hunting. He's just like looking around the rock. He's trying to find all those little tiny little critters yeah. living around there. And he's got to do that all day and all night to kind of keep going. So you need a big tank um, or a medium to larger tank that has a refugium, well established, very good water quality. Uh, for them to even have a chance of survival. They're probably one of the most sought after fish that don't live long for people because they put them in the wrong yeah, environment. Yeah, so definitely if you're considering one of these guys, be very selective with your decision in regards to uh, trying to keep one because again, they're Now, this one thing is easy. there are some of these captive rays now. Mm -hmm. ORI does some ORI of them. has some, yeah. Um, and those are conditioned to eat pellet and stuff like that. But you still need a very calm environment where you can spot feed them pellets and stuff and they have a chance to kind of pick and eat. They're not a fast moving fish at all. Yeah. But one of the most desired fish of all time. 
There's a couple of varieties, aren't there? Like different. You got blue mandarin, which is that guy. You got a red mandarin, which has more of a red background, and then the spotted mandarin. He's green and he has like bullseyes. That's the easiest one to keep. They okay. like even from the wild <clears throat> have like a really high rate of eating frozen and pellet and stuff like that. Cool. So knowledge is you guys. Knowledge is. I got too much of it. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> you gotta spit it out. We need to all learn it. <clears throat> Moving on to the corals. All right, so corals from the 220, just kind of a sampling. Go ahead and the first one. My favorite, one of my favorites, the toadstool. You do. You love yourself, Coral. I do. I don't know why. I just you love, really I love do. Easy stuff. I'm not into like the any tank stuff. build you've done has been full softies. <laughs> yeah. Give me the leathers. Give me the yeah. zoos. Um, this one, I don't even think is like even close to open in this uh, video. Not. This thing, I, how, I don't know, like 18, 24 inches. Yeah, I mean, I'd say I'm it's probably like close, close to 24 inches when he's fully opened up. Yeah. So this toadstool is like. Probably 24 inches when he's open. Um, has been in here since the beginning. I've had to try to shift him to not shadow everything. He's now attached to the back wall. There's no <laughs> removing him. Um, he is planted. Soft coral, easy to keep. Beginner, you know, doesn't take a lot of supplementation. Minimum, you know, medium to lower light. This is another toadstool. This is a green polyp one. So you can see it's got definitely a brighter Long polyps, color. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but toadstools can get big. So do remember that, like, you can get a little tiny fruit toadstool for your smaller tank. Eventually, it will outgrow it. Yeah. But yep. by that time, you just need to get a bigger water box. So it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We go all the way up to 300 gallons. It's all good. So that There's, thing usually covers a huge portion yeah. of that left side. Like. Yeah. Again, I think we'll when, we turned the, the when we shifted the light schedule for the show, I think he was like, oh, what's going on? Kind of irritated so we need bit. to post a picture on Instagram, Facebook, and all that, like when it's fully open. Yeah. And give it a good size comparison to the tank because yeah. it's huge. Um, so along with leathers for like beginner corals, zoanthids, mm -hmm. mushrooms, star polyps, um, soft corals have no hard skeleton, all flesh, easier to keep, lower light requirements, uh, more forgiving for the beginning of adding yeah. corals into it. Yep. Great beginner coral, my favorite. <laughs> Easy. You do. You like anything that takes as little care in a aquarium yeah, as possible. I do, because I, I think that's, <clears throat> it makes it, uh, it removes the barrier to entry a little bit for people. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can have a tank that looks beautiful, not as much upkeep while you kind mm -hmm. of learn and grow with it. Um, and honestly, like soft corals, there's so many colors, you get some movement, mm -hmm. um, and they cover in, they grow faster. So it's very rewarding. Yeah, naturally though, like <clears throat> that's where a lot of people will start is with their soft corals. They're easier LPS. And then they're like, well, now I'm thinking about dabbling in the SPS. I'm not even going to get into that, but <laughs> that's, that's typically what I see happen a lot is that they, they want to like challenge themselves to go to the next step. That's a challenge. SPS is his own challenge. Yeah. Not even. We're out. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do we have next? Star polyps. <laughs> that's where I'm sticking. All right. So this is actually a frog spawn. Um, this is a wall frog spawn, which means it has one long continuous skeleton. Which is pretty cool because it's this is I'd say probably a good nine to twelve inches long somewhere around there, mm -hmm. um, and it's very flowy. It's in the LPS family, so it's got a hard skeleton but a fleshy tentacles, and um, the wall ones tend to be a little bit more difficult than branching. I know they're my I love the wall hammers the wall like this guy right here, but yeah, like you said. More challenging and yep. less for, far less forgiving if you have an issue. Far less forgiving. So, and you're going to find mostly a lot of times what's available to you is going to be the branching, which is going to be individual heads on the skeleton, whereas this is one long continuous one. But with this, like LPS, Euphelias, hammers, frog spawns, um, that kind of stuff, nice movement. And they're a good way to graduate into LPS corals from soft corals because they're going to be easier than some of your stonier stuff. Um, but you know, kind of working from soft corals as your tank matures is a good way to go. Look at frog spawn, hammers, and torches. I'll never forget back in the day. I mean, this is probably like 15 years ago. Things were far less advanced than they were now. Yeah. There was this guy <laughs> on one of the forums that had a wall hammer that mm -hmm. I'm not even kidding was probably like half the length, like half of this desk. And he, when he went to take it out of his tank, when he was putting a new tank up, it was a wall hammer. So it was just like this 
It does. Ridiculous it like zigzag zigzag. mazes and stays yeah. connected. It was um, the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen when he took it out, especially seeing something that large. I mean, he, he's like holding it. Like this. They get huge, and like the same with the branching. Like you, like the thing with like frogs and all stuff. Like they continue. A lot of corals don't have an end growth, right? So they don't have like a size max, right. like a fish does. Okay, this fish is getting six inches, whatever. Corals can grow indefinitely, right? So you look at on the recent stuff and things that have been started, and you've got like hammers and frog spawn colonies that are like you know, meters wide, and mm -hmm. they're just continuing to grow. They don't have a stop point. So the same thing can technically happen in your aquarium. You take care of it properly. Um, that's when you get towards like fragging or upgrading your tank, Yeah, that when, kind of when stuff. you're like, oh, my corals have outgrown it, so let's get some, something bigger so they can grow into it more. Hence why corals form islands and landmass. That is true, they're the basis of the ocean, <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you feed the corals, and how often? Um, we did a feeding episode recently. Definitely check that out on YouTube. Uh, we did feeding in the frag, and um, it varies on the type of coral. So you've got broadcast feeding, which is putting water, food into the water column. That's usually for a lot of soft corals. Target feeding is going to be for uh, brains and stuff like that. You can use chunks of mysis. And then you've got like phyto, you've got copepods breeding as food sources. Like, there's a lot of different food options. But you should mm -hmm. have like one type of spot feeding coral uh, food, which I usually use like mysis or pellets, and then like broadcast feeding is like a phytozooplankton. But it's a very, it could be a very open conversation on that one. Um, how do you propagate frog spawn? Frogs. We have a blue Friday. <laughs> we have a blue Friday episode that'll show you exactly how to do that. Actually, yes, we did. We did do that on the Friday. Um, hammers, like the frog spawn and stuff that are wall, do not frag well at all. Right. Very, very um, experienced to have that work, um, and a lot of times it still does not. Branching, it's you're just cutting the skeleton. Pretty easy. Yeah. But the walls don't do not try that at home. Do not. Very difficult. More. Yeah. Do they require high lighting? Um, medium. I mean, medium to high. Yeah. I would say, but you definitely can't do it in like a low light softy tank as well. They will not be as happy. All right, what do we have next? The grafted monty. All right. Ooh, the famous grafted montipora from worldwide corals. Yeah, so this is a cool. Like monty is usually like the plating montipora. It's not encrusting. Um, usually come in like an orange. A green, mm -hmm. a purple. This is the grafted one. And this is where the red and green have been grafted to grow together. And it kind of land, randomly just sprinkles itself around the growth of it. And you can see this is attached to the back wall. It's been broken a few times when cleaning the glass. <laughs> um, but it's really cool because of the way that the colors just kind of randomly mix together in it. Yeah, what, what I love about monoporas, honestly, even as much as I love soft corals, my favorite stony coral is a monopora. Specifically the plating. I've kept a lot of them. They're real easy. And a lot of them have been grown in captivity for such a long amount of time. They're relatively forgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even this one, relatively forgiving. So I, I would say, like, if you're going to venture into some stony corals, try out a monopora because that's going to be one of your easier. Exactly. You know. Yeah. So, okay, you've done your soft corals. You've done your frog spawn, your LPS. You're thinking, I want to get into this whole hard coral game. Mm -hmm. um, look at your Montes, like encrusting and plating. They're going to be a lot more forgiving for light, water requirements, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So it's a good kind of place to get started yeah. because once you get into acros and millies and stuff, it's a whole other ball game that's yeah. way more intense. So. Um, kind of get your feet wet with this type and something cool with the grafting is like it's not naturally occurring no. so I think this was started with worldwide right um, and basically they took two different colors and they've gotten them to be able to like I don't know how they did it yeah I really I, I don't know the his, the the science behind it or like how it happened but so they put them together and they started to grow side by side but then they started to actually pull each other's color in there yeah. Um, so it's not just like a dividing. You see sometimes like people with fabias together and they just grow. They'll run into each other. Run into each other and they grow together and they're okay. But this one actually is like morphed into, I don't know. I should probably have more information before <laughs> I talk about this. I think you have enough knowledge. You don't need to know that too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's a really cool coral. I think there's multiple um, 
Grafting corals yeah, have become like a thing in yeah, the last like, they're, like they're five years. Yeah, they're figuring out years. how to do it with other with other types of corals, and it's kind of like I think of it almost like when they're breeding these clownfish. Yeah, almost like designer. Yeah, inner breedings of corals, yeah. kind of. I guess. Yeah. So, pretty cool stuff. If anyone would like to chime in on the true technicalness of how do you graph stuff, go for it. <laughs> if you guys have questions, post them below. We got Keenan over here taking those as we can. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually giving you the questions that are related to the ones you're talking about at the moment. Okay. But I got a ton that are just random okay. all over the place. As soon as we're done going through all the corals, we'll get to those. Right on, right on. All right. What we got next? Ganiapora. This is one of... <laughs> you say that's so exciting. Ganiapora. <laughs> all right. This is actually one of my favorite blah, corals, blah. but it's actually one of the harder to keep long term. Yeah. Um, so this one is quite large in the uh, 220. This takes up the left corner. And um, these have a poor success rate in captivity because they don't get fed enough. And all those little tentacles there, they want to eat. So if you're not putting enough filter feeding, it has to be zooplankton and phytoplankton, like really small particles because mm -hmm. it can't eat bigger chunks. Um, it will slowly over time just recede and die off. And um, a lot of tanks, it's hard to feed enough. So they don't live long term, mm -hmm. but they come in pink, green, yellow. Like we have, let's say four or five different varieties in the 220 yeah. of these. And they're absolutely gorgeous, but they are very hard to keep. Yeah. There are a few captive bred options, no? There like are, a, but they yeah. still need a lot of yeah. feeding. Like, because they're only, like, they rely a lot on that filter mm -hmm. feeding. And a lot of times we don't feed enough. Um, put them in a, an area where when you do, like, put your zooplankton or whatever, it kind of kicks to it. Um, mm -hmm. And then try to spot feed it regularly as far as for it to grow and live long term. Now, I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with gonopora or alveopora, but our alveopora, they're similar, right? But yes. they're also even harder. Alveopora is easier. Is it? Okay. Yes. Um, Alveopora has like half the little tentacles per head. So that's okay. how you can tell. So they have bigger little yeah, they almost things look like on their flowers. flowers. Kinda, yeah. They look more like a flower. Um, but they are easier to keep. They tend to be um, less demanding for food and stuff like that. Cool. Gynephora is harder. But they're Good somewhat related. Knowledges. Dropping knowledges. <laughs> All right, here's the last coral. One of my favorites. I got a so, lot of favorites, apparently. I see I my know. favorite behind it, though. Oh, your star polyps <laughs> are right there. So it's kind of like in the group of encrusting corals. So we're going to hit a couple. This is our war coral, um, Favites. And this is encrusting. Has, um, there's Favia, which has bigger head. The Favites is more encrusting, smaller. This is pretty cool because you'll see it has these green eyes, but it has red and green kind of splattered throughout the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And then we have some cool spots in this tank <clears throat> where we put a lot of encrusting corals together. So we have in the very middle with the blue and pink is the meteor shower cyphastria. And then to the right, and we went too far. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's running. Um, <laughs> we can, we, we can yeah. replay it, yeah. Golden Vona. This is a burning banana um, stylo. I love that name. It's grown and encrusted. Is this all it's over. an encrusting stylo? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, it's stylo. It's got a much longer name. Um, what is it called? The burning banana. Bright red polyps, yellow base. And then on that one rock was also like a pavona. Can we play that again, Sure. <laughs> all right, so there's your war coral. So we do have these, we're, when we did this, these, this photography, the video is here, we did run it with the, the white lights up pretty high. So when these are under a lot of actinic, these corals really pop mm -hmm. a lot. Um, but this is more of a realistic kind of uh, video of what you, it would look like during daylight. I'm a big fan of the like super blue, but it's really hard to capture. It is, it especially is. with a camera. So yeah. center. Blue with pink is Meteor Shower Sebastia. To the right of it is Golden Pavona. And in the very front, looks super fuzzy, is the Golden Leptastria. Um, these are all like encrusting LPS uh, type corals. So moderate care, <laughs> higher light. I saw what? the same co comment, Keenan. <laughs> what? I think I know what you're laughing at. Maybe I couldn't hold it in. <laughs> Just go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm um, sorry. 
<laughs> I'm gonna know now. Um, I have a few I've seconds. I've been laughing over here for a while. I've been seeing a couple of funny ones. <laughs> and people keep mentioning, where are the blue shirts? People love you guys with the blue shirts. Dude, me too. Oh, man. I wear the blue shirt every Come on. day. All right, he doesn't we, like it. We can wear the blue like shirts. It. We just have to, well, I guess it doesn't have to be this. We don't have to wear the same shirt. We can you don't have to it coordinate it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think it'd be weird if we were both different colors, though. I don't know. All right, we gotta like. Yeah, you guys gotta vote on it. I've got to message every Wednesday morning and say, "What color are you wearing?" And then we'll like coordinate Travis our clothes. Said, <laughs> Travis said, "It recedes and dies off like my hairline." <laughs> what does? I don't know. He's talking about the corals, probably. But that's <laughs> that's what I read. Like as we're as you're sitting here talking, I couldn't hold it in because I'm like, "Wow, it's dark." <laughs> I'm sorry about your hairline. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right, I. I don't know where we were. Where do we go from here, Keenan? <laughs> Give us some direction. Uh, we can <laughs> announce some winners for t-shirts. Yeah, guys, hey, we're giving away. T-shirts. Again, we have a merch store on Waterbox Aquarium. So if you own a Waterbox, you don't own a Waterbox, you just want to support this amazing live stream that we do here every week, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can head over to waterboxaquariums.com and pick up this merch. This is our logo tee. It's a, it's a NYX level cotton, super soft. I see mm -hmm. people are commenting how much they, they like these. So. Yes, we had a lot of these go out for um, Blue Friday, and all the feedback is like, this is like the softest shirt ever. And it really is. Yeah. So. Keenan, let's wait till the end because we still got to ask Jess. So I'll. Uh, all right, I guess. He was to ready to give them away, yeah. and you just killed the You guys got to stick around because we still have Ask Jess. If you guys want to get your questions answered live here on Waterbox, um, Email askjess at waterboxaquariums.com. If we don't answer them here, we'll answer them. Uh, we? Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> will answer them regardless through the email. So let's, let's do that. All right. I like that jingle. It is. It's a good jingle. All right, you guys. <laughs> I'm kind of, am, I kind of, am I too goofy for you guys today? I don't know what's happening. Um, all right, first question is from John Corky. He says, hello, Jess. I'm filling up, let's see, I'm filling up my brain with knowledges from old Waterbox YouTube videos before purchasing my first saltwater tank, and I'm wondering how to best source pest-free fishing corals. I feel like going slow with dry sand, dry rock, and clean livestock to minimize contamination. I don't have the money to set up a secondary quarantine tank in addition to a new uh, display tank right now. Question. Some awesome... <laughs> I didn't read these before, so I apologize. <laughs> Question. Some awesome sources of aquaculture coral and fish don't sell to hobbyists. Is it normal to ask my LFS to place an order which I can pick up as soon as it arrives? I don't want them to add the new livestock to their tanks before I pick them up. I want to limit any possible pest hitchhikers to my LFS may have. <laughs> you should prepare yourself for it. <laughs> so there's a, a couple reasons I put the whole question in there. It's a little bit longer. Is kind of talking about like not having a quarantine. You know, it's not always possible to have a quarantine. If you're not going to, you don't have to be smart about where you get your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, starting with uh, dry rock does help. Um, but you like your sand, you can buy live sand in the back. Just go with that. It's going to help with some bacteria. There's nothing pest-wise you're going to get in there from like your carob sea, mm -hmm. or sand and stuff like that that's in the bag. Um, but most local fish stores should allow you, if you're going to order something from one of their um, places, that you can pick it up on the day it comes. Yeah. As long as you can be there within the few hours that it arrives, you're going to basically say that, you know, this wasn't dipped. They haven't kept an eye on it. They haven't right. fed it. Um, you should be fine. You can also check out, um, I know a handful of places, uh, one we've worked with pretty well is Live Aquaria. They do their own quarantining process and stuff like that of aquacultured stuff. Yeah. So you can look at them as well to ship direct to you, but your local fish store should be able to pick up on the day of delivery yeah. with no problem. But you know, definitely still use live sand, Carib Sea Life Rock, the Marker Rocks is all dry, good stuff we've used. Um, and then just some regular premix water should be good to go. Excellent. So thank you for that question, John. Next question is from Mark. He says, "Hi Jess, how's it going? I ended up buying a Marine X 60.3 on Blue Friday due to due to space in my room. I'm wondering where do you suggest 
to direct my dosing tubing into the sump. Thanks in advance. My, I mean, there's a couple options. My favorite place is going to be like, in any of our sumps, you're gonna have the socks, middle chamber with a skimmer and media reactor and stuff like that would go. And then you have a little baffle section and then your pump. I put it right on that ledge where it goes into the baffles before the pump. Okay. So what is, you don't wanna put it up by your socks because technically your skimmer could pull some stuff out or mm -hmm. your socks or whatever catch it. Um, you know, so I put it right before the pump so it gets mixed enough before it goes into your pump to not put it right into your tank. So if you put okay. it like right by your pump intake, especially like alkalinity, it comes in and it usually clouds up mm -hmm. and then it gets kicked up. You'll see it actually come into your tank depending on how much you're putting in there. So put it like right in that little baffle section before your return pump chamber. So it can mix up and not get pulled out by reactors or like skimmers, anything like that. Excellent. So welcome to the family, Mark. Uh, Marine X 60.3. Beautiful. Alrighty. So next question is from David. David says, I'm in, I'm the type of person that says go big or go home. I was wondering if Waterbox Aquariums offered the Reef Pro on a 200 gallon or larger display volume. The reason for the tank size is because I have had all sizes up to 150 gallons and I found it was never big enough. By the way, I love what you and Waterbox are doing. Great information and presentation. Keep up the terrific work. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, I've actually held on to this one because we weren't allowed to talk about our Pro Max <laughs> nice. for a while. Um, so now that we officially have released the Pro Max, we can answer this question. Um, up until recently, the 226 foot Pro, mm -hmm. which is now the Reef 220, was our biggest model. 180 display, 220 total. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't big enough for a lot of people. And they've wanted to know. <laughs> uh, so if you have not heard the news, we do have the Pro Max, which now goes up to seven foot. Yeah. 300 some odd gallons. Yeah. Um, all the bells and whistles, amazing cabinet. So, you know, for those that have had the big tank before and are looking for something bigger, we still want rimless. You still want that great quality that we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Pro Max is here. So I actually talked to David, he's very excited. Nice. And he's working on figuring out where and how big of a Pro Max he can get. <laughs> um, but, you know, for all those people that have asked for months or years if we're making a bigger one, yeah. can now answer your question. I know, it's yes. been so long you guys have been asking for that. And uh, <clears throat> so many people, like David even said, they, they get into a, an aquarium and then they're like, oh man, I want something bigger and I want something bigger. Um, and the Pro Max kind of does that for you because it's it's our deepest tank, not only our deepest tank, so it's 30 inches deep mm -hmm. front to back. So it gives you huge aquascaping potential. Yes. Um, it also goes up to roughly, I think it's about 86 inches, which is over um, seven feet. So, right. Yeah. Um, amazing system. So definitely check those out. We are taking uh, pre-orders on them. They'll start shipping in February. That's so soon. I mean, by the time the holidays get done with, that's February. I mean, November's almost over. Yeah. I don't I know. even know how. Thanksgiving's about to be here. Um, Blue Friday's over. I know. <laughs> we got our but, Blue Friday uh, cups. I, I <laughs> want to note that I said 60.3 on that previous question. There is no such thing as a 60.3. There isn't. Yeah. It's either a 60.2 or a 90.3. It's a 60. Yeah, he's 60.2. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's ask Jess. Email askjess at waterboxacquariums.com. Any questions you have, we can answer them live on here. What you got, Keenan? Good deal. Uh, I got a lot of questions. I'm trying oh, God. to filter through them here. Um, what are rare or uncommon fish you would consider putting on a reef tank? What are what? Rare or uncommon. Uncommon. That I would consider putting into a reef tank? It's a really open question. Um, you can rephrase Denied. it. Denied. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's Don't put so any. Broad. <laughs> um, What's your favorite rare uncommon fish to put in a reef tank? You want to know my answer? Sure. An Atlantic blue tank. Which is the yellow belly, right? No. The, oh, uh, no, the, yeah, they're the, more the round. Atlantic. Yeah, yes, they look yes. more like a yellow tank, but they're blue. That's and true. they're a really cool fish. You don't see them very often because there's not a whole lot of collection, I think, for mm -hmm. them. But those are awesome. Look them up. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really rare fairy wrasses that you can get into that have a lot of color that are good for reefs. Um, and I always have to go back to like my favorite fish and I've done it in reef tanks before. It just depends on what kind of corals you have because it's reef safe with caution. It's a regal angel. Yeah. I've had it, I had a breeding pair um, in my 220. They would actually do like the little mating dance and wow. stuff like that. Um, but it was like a full SBS type coral uh, system. 
So they're going to pick out a lot of stuff. So probably not a fair answer, but that's what I give you. <laughs> All right, this one's from John. He's asking, in a new aquarium with a pair of clowns, is it smart to purchase a larger torch or a hammer if they can decide to host on these? I hear clowns can damage or kill smaller torches. <clears throat> well, um, that's a tough one because you don't know what your clownfish is going to decide to host. So, and the 220, they've mm -hmm. bounced from the elegance to a single head torch, to a bigger torch, to a Ganeapora, back to an elegance. Um, they've kind of gone everywhere. I've had clownfish that have hosted an algae magnet <laughs> instead of an anemone. Um, oh my goodness, that's great. You know, they'll do leathers, they'll do mushrooms, and you know, one of the tanks here, we have clowns in there with five anemones, and uh, they won't go into any of them, and they ignore them. So, if you're buying something in hopes that they'll host it, good luck, because it's completely up to them. Yeah. But if they do decide to like host something small and aggressively, you're gonna have to remove it or let them do their thing. Like right now in the 220, the elegance is much smaller, mm -hmm. but we're letting them have their space. As long as they can survive in a smaller state, they're happy. Yeah. We're seeing if there's enough of a balance. If they do cause enough harm where we can't like feed the elegance or it continues to get smaller, yeah. it will be removed. Yeah, yeah, we'll put it somewhere where it's not getting beat up. They make their own choices, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> they do what they want. They do what they want. <laughs> Can you keep non-reef safe fish with anemones? Usually, yeah. Anemones don't taste good, and they sting. So they're <laughs> generally pretty safe. <laughs> Do, uh, I already asked this one. Do anemones need strong light, like the HD from Aqua Illumination? They do. Anemones do need a lot of light, um, good water quality, good amount of light, and a lot of feeding. So they're not like an easy, easy care item. Um, bubble tips are your easiest as you get into like sea bays and stuff like that. They're much, much harder to keep. So you can't just throw that into a beginner's a beginner tank at all. Okay, I got this question here um, with several different tanks. So I'm just gonna ask it like uh, broad. Can you put a Mandarin on a 20 cube or nope. on a 60.3? Nah. Uh, so basically what's the minimum size you can put a Mandarin on? I would so. I'm gonna get roasted if people don't make my decision <laughs> here. Um, I would say three foot tank with a refugium, an active, well established refugium, and you're still adding copepods and stuff regularly. Um, ideally, a self sustaining five or six foot tank. Yeah. Um, so I mean, people will say I did it in my 20 cube. People say you can't do it unless anything 500 gallons. Um, Mandarins are very heated debate. Yeah. A lot of times, but definitely three foot, well established refugium, and be willing to add more and more copepods if you have to for the survival of that fish. What cleanup crew do we have in the 220? Snails and crabs. There you go. <laughs> there's a lot Creepy of them. crabs. <laughs> um, there's some conks in there. There's. Um, Sand, sand snails, there's a There's even a Sarah. sand sifting starfish in there that I didn't realize that was still in there. I don't know when he went in. I don't either, but I know when we were cleaning it up like a month ago, I was like, oh. I see him every so often. I was like, oh, you're still There's here. that. Um, that's a debated <laughs> on long term, but um, we've got Sarah snails and Asnaria snails for the sand. We've got regular old. Um, Snails for the glass, we've got some conks on there, and then like a mix of blue and red like hermit crabs for the most part. Okay, cool. Kevin is asking, um, I have a flame angel who has recently started nipping at my corals. Yep. Is there a way to get it to stop re without removing <laughs> yep. it from the tank? I feed them about two times a day. Um, the only way you might have a chance, um, and they're natural pickers, they're not a reef safe angel technically. Um, I think it's 50-50 on those guys, but I found that if you have Coral Beauty, Flame Angel, any of those pygmies um, and dwarf angels, put a sea veggie clip in there for them to kind of graze on throughout the day, and it, like, they're nippers. They want to pick. Mm -hmm. So if they have something like algae to pick at, they might be less likely to pick at your corals. But even still, a lot of times you're going to have to evict them. They're beautiful, but a lot of times it doesn't go well. This is an easy one. Um, I was going between a 60 gallon and a 90 gallon. I can't decide. Which should I choose? 90. 
As big as you can fit and afford, do it because you're gonna want more fish and more corals, so. It's inevitable with an aquarium. You're gonna start with the smaller one and you're eventually gonna graduate. Yeah, to, uh, so it's larger. like how long you prolong in your upgrade? Just go bigger. Yeah. Okay, um, this one came in a lot too for many different sizes. Um, stocking recommendations. So what would you stock on a, I saw a two foot a lot and I saw a four foot a lot. You, it's too broad. You can't have that question because if, say you have a four foot and you want to have two tanks. Say I want to get a coal tank and this tank. That wipes out 75% of your bio load. Whereas if you wanted to have a group of firefish and some clowns and some like smaller stuff, you could have a ton more. Um, and also depends on how often you're doing water changes. How good is your skimmer? What are you doing for your chemical? Like. There's no, it's not like, a lot of times freshwater, like, it's one inch per gallon. Yeah. Um, which I don't think even really true for freshwater, but definitely for saltwater, there's too much variance in the type of fish. The more small fish you have, you can, the small fish, the more you can have. Tangs, bigger fish, the less you're going to have. There's no yeah. good cut and dry answer for that, no matter what tank. The number one thing that I've seen when we've looked at our water box aquarium owners, systems when we look in the group and we look at other professionals in the industry research 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 and then research some more that's really what's going to give you the tools we give you yeah. a high level overview here but we can't give you guys all the details we'd be here for yeah it's too much to do while. with like aggression territory water mm -hmm. change nutrients like there's so much variation use your local fish store for that good yeah. information can find someone that you trust for that um, that can kind of help you guide every time you order a different fish or add yeah. a different fish or whatever, so. Good deal. Now I'll go to the last one here. Are we going to do a Pro Max build when they start coming in? God, yes. Yes, we are. Yeah. Of course, a 320.7. I have a wall <laughs> already picked out for it for the last year that you guys didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're going to definitely, that's going to be a big deal. We're going to... Um, that's going to be and a I major this, build. It is. Oh it's going to be a major. Over, oh it'll probably God. be a very long series. But I'll give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek. What? The The 220.6 may or may not find a new home. So we haven't decided that yet. Maybe you guys can tell us what you think. But we haven't decided that? When you mean like another wall? No, what? no, no. What I'm saying like about? the 220.6 might be coming down. Oh. Uh, I say might. It's coming down at some <laughs> point because we're putting a big seven foot Pro Max there. Like, it's just a lot a of the animals that are in there now will then move over to that system. So it'll be, it'll be actually kind of cool though because like we're going to set up a Pro Max seven foot. Mm -hmm. Huge, biggest rimless thing in the market. Yeah. And we're going to actually then also be able to show hey, you're upgrading your water box to yeah. another big water box. How would you do it? Because yeah. that's a two plus year established tank at that point. Yeah. You know, those rocks are covered in corals. The fish have been in there. Um, so it's good a good a setup series, but mm -hmm. also a, like a transfer series. Yeah. So um, yep. that's going to be, be a lot of work. It is. Yes. So guys, we're going to give away a couple t-shirts <laughs> here on Facebook and YouTube because we're live on both. So I think Keenan's got the winners over there, right? So All right, ready? Drum roll. The, the water box drum roll. Winners are. Oh, look at that! He's got a graphic. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I was not expecting that. I can't read, Keenan. All right, no, Suzanne is up on YouTube and Justin <laughs> Jenkins on Facebook. Yay, congratulations! Congratulations, guys! These are super nice shirts. People love them. If you want to pick them up. Because you own a water box, you don't own a water box, you just like watching the channel, uh, head over to waterboxaquariums.com. They're like $15.99. So, really nice shirt. No, they're super, super comfy. So, congratulations to you guys. Um, uh, where is our drum roll sound effect? Yeah, we do. You guys need it. Uh, I ask that every time. You say it's coming, I, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we need a soundboard, yeah. So. Be All, right, you guys. All right, anyway. <laughs> We're we here next week. Yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We're here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. talking about aquariums, how to be better at keeping aquariums. Jess is dropping her knowledge. So. See you next Wednesday. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks.
Thank you all for watching. Remember, we're live on Facebook and YouTube, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit those notifications. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us next week. Thanks for watching.